Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I'm going to show you how to set up the BL Touch on an Anet. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So before I start, one very very important thing because the amount of the hateful comments I got last time I did a video on this printer right here. No, it's not an ANET anymore because it's almost fully custom. However, it's still running on an ANET A8 board. So for all intents and purposes, this guide is for ANETs. However, you can actually use it on other printers where you want to install a BL Touch that run on Mar. Now, having gotten that out of the way, this right here is a BL Touch. The BL Touch is a bed leveling sensor which was created by a Korean girl named Paris. When I went to Bay Area Maker Fair, I did have the pleasure of meeting Paris. She gave me a couple of BL Touches to try out and I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time, but I was quite intimidated in venturing into the Marlin configuration. But I did get there and I eventually found out it wasn't really that complicated. So I thought to myself, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to install the wires because everything is included in the patch packaging. You have clips, you have crimps, and it's a matter of simply following the instructions which are on the site in order to know which wire goes into which pin. Having said that, what I'm going to do is jump on the PC and I'm going to download the latest Marlin firmware because thankfully, Marlin now supports ANET, so there's no longer need to install Skynet on your ANET. Um, and I'm going to show you the whole process. So first things first, you will want to go on the Marlin firmware uh, website, which is marlinfw.org. So the first thing you're going to do is click on download and you're going to choose the latest release, which is 1.1.x, which is 1.1.6 at the moment. Once it downloads, you simply open the um, the zip file and you can simply just extract it onto the desktop. Once it downloads, open the Marlin folder. You're going to go onto Marlin and these are the files needed for the firmware. However, what we're going to do since this is compatible with ANET, we're going to go into example configurations. We are then going to go on the ANET folder, choose whether it's an A6 or an A8. In my case, it's an ANET A8. I'm going to double click on it, copy those two files configuration.h and configurationadv.h. We're going to go back on the Marlin folder and we're going to uh, place them there. And when it asks you, replace the files in the destination. So here we already have the Marlin firmware already set up for the ANET A8. Next up, you're going to go on the Arduino website. You're going to go on software and you're going to download the Arduino software in order to upload the firmware. So we're going to go on Windows installer. We're going to download the software. Once downloaded, you will launch the application and install the Arduino software. It would ask you to install the device driver, install. Once it's done, simply close, find the program and run it. Now this is what it looks like. Now when you run Arduino for the first time, you'll notice that if you go on tools and board, ANET is not listed anywhere. So we need to install that definition. Now in order to do so, simply go on the uh, website address github.com forward slash skynet3d forward slash ANET dash board and clone or download the two files there. Once downloaded, go to your documents folder and Arduino and extract the files that you have just downloaded there. Close your Arduino and run it once more. Once it opens, you can see that if you go on tools and board at the bottom, there is ANET V 1.0. So click on the ANET. So the first thing we're going to need to do is open up the firmware for um, the ANET. In order to do so, we're going to click on open. We're going to locate the uh, folder where we extracted the uh, firmware. We're going to click on Marlin and we're going to look for the marlin.ino file. Open it and another window will open, which will look like this. And this has all the firmware on it. And as you can see, you have a lot of different tabs here. So we're going to go to configuration H file. And this is one of the folders or one of the tabs you use mainly in order to set up 
quite a few things. Now, as per default, the BL touch is not activated. So the first thing you need to do is actually activate the BL touch and set a few parameters for it. So the first thing you need to do is locate the BL touch instructions in order to activate them. So we're going to click on control F. We're going to click on BL touch and we're going to click on find. You will be presented with this section right here. And as you can see, when you find these two forward slash, it means that that line of code is deactivated. So all you need to do is just delete those. And as you can see, the define has changed to green and it has been activated. Once that's done, press enter, click hashtag define servo zero underscore pin 27. And that basically tells the firmware that the BL touch is controlled by pin 27 on the board. So what we need to do now is set the Z probe offset from the nozzle. So we're once again going to press control F, type in X probe, and we will find these three fields here. What this will do is we'll tell Marlin firmware where the BL touch is in relation to the nozzle. So as you can see the diagram here, if you're looking at the front of the printer, if the BL touch is situated to the right of the nozzle, the number is in positive, And if it's situated to left, it's in negative on the X axis. If it's on the Y axis and the BL touch is situated behind the nozzle, it's a plus, it's a positive number. And if it's in front of the nozzle, it's a negative number. Same thing applies to the Z probe offset um, on the Z axis. So in my case, if I take a measurement, I can see that the Z probe is about 29 millimeters to the right from the nozzle. On the X axis, it's within, uh, it's in line, so it's a zero. And as for the Z height, the nozzle stops about two millimeters above the nozzle. So we're going to type in 29 for the X probe offset from extruder and two millimeters for the Z offset. Now what we also want to do is enable uh, safe homing. Now safe homing is that when you press home, the nozzle will home in the center of the bed. So we're going to go and press control F, type in safe underscore homing. Once you find the section, we're going to go ahead and remove those two forward slashes. So the define uh, Z safe homing um, command is enabled. Next, we will search for end stop underscore inverting. And we will look for the last one, which is here. It's Z min probe end stop inverting. Change that from true to false. What we need to do now is enable the bed leveling on the Marlin firmware, because currently if we don't enable it, all we will have is the auto home feature. So we're going to look for the word bilinear and we will come to the section here. So what we want to do is remove the two forward slashes in front of define auto bed level bilinear. What this does is it gives us the bed leveling feature where the probe will touch nine different points on the bed to see the bed leveling. The next thing you need to look at, and this is custom to each and every printer. Now for the init, if you use the stock extruder, this might not change, but in my case, this needs to change according to the printer that I have since it has some modification. Now what these numbers will do is determine where the BL touch will, uh, will have its limits on the bed. Now in my case, the nozzle is on 0x and 0y because I still have to do some modifications. Don't judge me. However, I know that the, uh, the BL touch is 29 millimeters to the right of the nozzle. So that cannot be 20 because I will have conflict. So what I'll do is I'll change it to 30. Then I will do a limit of where the nozzle will touch on the right side of the bed. So basically giving it the limit not to go any further. So in my case, 190 is fine. And these two will set the minimum distance it will travel in the Y direction for the first probe and the maximum direction to the Y for the, uh, for the end probe. So in my case, we're gonna make it move 20 millimeters 
towards the Y and the maximum of around 175 towards the Y. So now we gave it a minimum and a maximum both for left, right, front and back touch points. Next, in my case, since I did quite some modifications to the printer, I needed to set new bed dimensions and also bed limitations. So we're gonna look for X underscore max POS, so position gonna click on find and we have these values here. These are the travel limits. We have the bed positions and also the minimum positions. Now, so as a default, it's set to minus 33 because when you home the ANET, the nozzle goes towards the X um, much more than the bed starts. So it's in minus 33. Now in my case, the nozzle sits exactly on the X, Y corner. So zero and zero. Now I need to change those to zero and zero. Now keep in mind that every printer will be different. So it's always good to have this measured out. Check how far the nozzle is from the um, X distance and the Y distance from the first corner you want the print area to begin. And this will obviously be the Z max position. Once again, I did some modifications, so that changes to 195. Now, something very important to note, if you decide to change the extruder to one similar to the one I have um, printed, you have to keep in mind that the belt tightening position for the extruder is moved to the top and not to the bottom. This will result in the X axis moving in the opposite direction of what you want it to. In order to change the direction of any axis, you need to look for the text which states invert underscore X underscore DIR. So we're gonna find that text in the code and we'll come to the section here. As you can see, there are three direction values. There's one for X, Y, and Z. Now, what we need to change is simply this text here. So currently it's false. I need to change that to true in order to invert the direction of the X axis. And that is the final step. All we're going to do now is simply upload the firmware to the ANET and let it do its thing. Now, once the firmware has been uploaded. If you switch it on, you should see the BL touch triggering a couple of times to calibrate itself. So once it loads up, press the center button, go on prepare and do bed leveling. It will first home in the center of the bed as we set it up to do. and then it will do the nine point calibration. And that is it, ladies and gents. Um, it, it's not that complicated. Once you know what you have to do, obviously it's easier, but once you go into Marlin, as intimidating as it may be, if you go, just just look through the firmware and start reading the lines and things will start making sense to you. Even the homing position or the speeds or the acceleration, it's all listed there and it's very clear. So you might be courageous enough to start playing around with those and learn more about Marlin firmware. Now, two things that I need to point out. One is that you still need to set the Z offset of the BL touch. And I can cover that in another episode just so I don't do this too long. Secondly is do not forget to put a G29 code at the start of each print because Marlin does not keep in memory the bed mesh leveling, which is why before every print, ideally, you would do the G29 so it levels the bed accordingly. And that is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will leave links to the BL Touch in the video description below. I will also leave files for the extruder assembly, which is basically the Prusa style assembly, but it has a place where you can install the BL Touch on it. Also, a big shout out to a guy named Oderwat on Thingiverse who has quite decent instructions on how to set up the BL Touch. Um, I reached out to him, he was very nice. 
um, his instructions helped out a lot and this is why I was able to do this video. Finally, I will also leave links for all the firmware and the files that I downloaded and showed you guys so you guys can try to have a go. That is it for me guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my absolutely awesome patrons for their incredible support. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe and happy making guys. <laughs>